everybody. Could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. Scientists in Barcelona have created the first magnetic wormhole. If you're a Star Trek fan like I am, you're familiar with the basic concept of a wormhole. But wormholes like the one featured in Deep Space Nine that function as shortcuts between distant regions of space are gravitational wormholes. The wormhole created by scientists in the physics department at the Autonomous University of Barcelona is a magnetic wormhole, which is still pretty cool. This wormhole is a sphere constructed of special metamaterials that is able to transfer the magnetic field of a magnet on one end to the other end, where it's detectable as a magnetic monopole. As it passes through the sphere from one end to the other, the magnetic field is undetectable. It might not be able to transport spacecraft to the Gamma Quadrant, but its creators hope that it could have practical applications in medicine, specifically in the area of magnetic resonance imaging. The paper on this magnetic wormhole is published in Scientific Reports. Next up, thanks to scientists at UCLA, a paralyzed man has been able to voluntarily control his leg muscles and take steps with the aid of a robotic exoskeleton. The patient is Mark Pollock, who, before suffering the injury that paralyzed him, was notable for being the first blind person to race to the South Pole. Pollock was paralyzed in 2010. Now, thanks to an assist from a robotic exoskeleton and a non-invasive form of spinal stimulation, Pollock has been able to move his leg muscles and take thousands of steps. This is a significant achievement because it combines robotics with Pollock's own muscle control. The exoskeleton was necessary, but it wasn't what was doing all the work. Thanks to the training he received with spinal stimulation, Pollock was able to flex his knee and lift his leg. The researchers hope this combined approach could lead to more effective forms of rehabilitation for some of the millions of people worldwide who live with paralysis from spinal cord injuries. This research was published by the IEEE Engineering in Medicine and Biology Society and was funded in part by the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. And finally, researchers in South Korea have devised a novel application for used coffee grounds, energy storage. Researchers at Ulsan National Institute of Science and Technology, or UNIST, have developed a simple process that allows coffee grounds to absorb and store methane. Capturing and keeping methane is desirable for two reasons. First, methane is the second most prevalent greenhouse gas, and pound for pound, it contributes more to climate change than carbon dioxide, so removing some of it from the atmosphere is a good thing. Second, methane is also a fuel, a cleaner alternative to coal or oil. The researchers are now working on a way to use coffee grounds to store hydrogen as well. The remarkable properties of coffee are already well known to many. It's a leading source of antioxidants, it may reduce the risks of heart disease, cancer, and type 2 diabetes, and it practically wrote this video. The UNIST study is published in the journal Nanotechnology. Scientists create a magnetic wormhole. A combination of robotics and spinal stimulation allows a paralyzed man to move his legs again, and you can add energy storage to the list of uses for coffee. That's the good news. I know. It is. You don't think so? Maybe if I gave you some coffee in the morning, you'd be less grumpy. <laughs>